episode of Chain Link Sports, and we have your certified hitting guru, Jeff Fry. What's up, Jeff? How you doing? Hey, Nico. How you doing, buddy? Not bad. Thanks for coming on, man. Jeff here, uh, eight seasons at the big league level and a 290 career hitter, and now he's transitioned from the diamond over to being a sports agent, and even more recently, he's taken to Twitter to give his knowledge of hitting. Um, and he's also colliding forces with other hitting coaches. So kind of a lot of old school thinking versus new school, um, a lot of different, um, ideas on how to build like the perfect swing and the perfect hitter. So Jeff, thanks for coming on again. And, uh, let's get started with questions. So like I mentioned before, you are a sports agent now. So when you retired, um, I'm not sure how long it took you, but what, what made you follow the path? of becoming a uh, sports agent? Well, it was, I mean, almost immediately after I retired, I had a, a lifelong friend um, that unfortunately we're not friends anymore because of this, but uh, approached me about um, starting our own sports agency. He used to work for Scott Boris. And, you know, I knew that I wanted to stay in the game, but I didn't really want to get on bus and start coaching the Meyer leagues or scouting being gone all the time so I thought it was a right. perfect opportunity to stay in the game and help players and so we start our own agency and um, you know my first client was Darren Oliver my old teammate and at the time he was with Scott Boris and it was kind of in a rough patch in his career and um, you know a lot of times unfortunately in this agent in this business they love you when you're doing well and when they don't love you as much when you're struggling and you're not, right. you're not paying them big, big, uh, checks, you know? So yep. Darren called me because he felt like Scott wasn't doing anything for him. And I, uh, it's funny. I mean, I remember the conversation like it was yesterday. He goes, Fry daddy, I need you to get, help me get a job. I said, Darren, I can't. I said, you're represented by Scott Boris. Yep. He goes, well, stay on the phone. I want you to hear me fire him. I was like, no, just call me back. He called me back. <laughs> Uh, within 24 hours, he got an invitation to big league camp with the Rockies, and he played another nine years after that. Wow. Okay. So. And uh, so I saw your interview on Twitter, and it was with Fox Sports or something affiliated with Fox Sports, right? There's. Yep, Fox Sports Southwest. Uh, I did some uh, Rangers pre- and post-game show. Uh, right. Are you talking about recently? Or, oh, you're talking about recently. Yeah, yeah. So, so the reason why I say that is because <clears> – <throat> you were kind of talking about um, your career as a sports agent <clears throat> and you mentioned how cutthroat the business can be. And I want to ask you, what was your biggest challenge starting off? And maybe it was that kind of like adjusting um, to that kind of mentality and that kind of characteristic of being cutthroat with, you know, people or clients and just what was your biggest challenge when you first started? Well, it was establishing credibility, you know, because, I mean, I had so many friends in the game um, throughout my career that, you know, I thought, oh, I could just call this guy up and call, he'll want to hire me and he'll hire me. And, yeah. you know, it's it doesn't really work that way. And especially if you don't have a law degree, you know. Um, so I was always like the jokester guy. So why are my old teammates going to all of a sudden fire their agent and hire me? So it really it was building credibility. And uh, Darren Oliver was, you know, the, the first stepping stone in doing that. Um, with a guy with nine years in the big leagues hires us and we get him a job, you know, within 24 hours. And, you know, so that, that was a big step. Um, what was the other question? I forgot. No, no, it's fine. Yeah. That was really yeah, just kind of like your biggest challenge. And uh, I just didn't know if it kind of related to the business being um, cutthroat. Cause I remember you saying in that other interview, how like not really, you know, your style, not really your personality. So I didn't know if that was a, a struggle when, when you first started. Well, it is because, <laughs> Uh, and it's struggled today because, you know, you, you build up a loyalty with your clients and you have to, when you're not a big agency and you don't represent, you know, Bryce Harper and those kind of guys. So, um, you know, it's a loyalty thing. And at first when they're amateurs, it was, you know, a handshake agreement, um, was all we were allowed to do. Now we can actually represent high school kids as their agent, but for some reason we can't be an agent to a college guy, which doesn't make sense to me. Um, so it was, uh, you know, seeing guys when we go to the winter meetings and you see all the agents there and it's just, it's kind of slimy, a slimy business, man, because these guys, you know, they'll act like you're your friend and then they'll, 
go right behind your back and try and contact your client. Right. You know, say, oh, this guy was good for you when you started, but now you've become a star. And now you need to step up to, you know, to a bigger agency. So that's kind of, I've had a lot of sleepless nights when I got a phone call from a guy who I felt we were solid and, and all of a sudden somebody got in his ear and he changed his mind. Those, those are the tough ones. Right. So let's shift gears here. A little bit more of a positive uh, um, topic here. So you started your she gone movement on Twitter. So first just explain real quick what that is and then what inspired you to start that? Well, she gone thing started as just a joke. Um, I was, I have, three good buddies of mine that are um, in scouting. So we're on a group text. And so we send each other silly videos and stuff that we see stuff right. that we, you know, that we think is silly and what these guys are teaching kids. And um, so I was just in the backyard and my son was back here with me and I said, let's make a video. So I made like a little 12 second video and uh, imitating something and go, Oh man, the light bulb went on, you know, and, and uh, I put on social media on Twitter and one of my scout buddies, uh, an hour later says, man, you got like 400 views. So I was like, that's pretty cool. And then he, like another hour later, he goes, dude, you got 4,000 views. I was like, seriously? <laughs> then the people that uh, I was basically not really attacking, because I don't consider it attacking, but exposing is the word I like to use. Uh, uh -huh. They got pissed and they start <laughs> direct messaging me, hateful stuff, calling my kids names and all this stuff. And it, it really pissed me off. So I was like, I'm definitely gonna have to make another video now and yeah I don't know how many I've made now but I actually uh, the reason I was late to this uh, uh, late to this today was because I was hanging upside down in my backyard trying to make a video but it was too painful I couldn't <laughs> do it. <laughs> I, yeah and I've actually seen um, your other video where you were upside down trying to get you know the upward swing it's all it's, it's all really good and um, and also just in my experience I've had coaches you know try and implement that with me and or just like different variations of it. But I've always been taught, you know, you know, barrel straight to the ball, you know, keep it simple. And so like, that's why, you know, when, when I listen to you talk about it, it kind of like really resonates with me. So I do appreciate, you know, that um, old school way of hitting. Well, I appreciate that too. And it's, you know, I know there's new techniques and new, you know, data and they have all this biomechanical stuff, how the body moves. And I understand all that stuff, but uh, I have a problem with people saying that what we did in our, era won't work today and right. there's been so many great players in this game over the years and you know they were great players without any of this stuff they didn't have any of this stuff available to them and somehow they got it done so you can't convince me that this is the way it has to be done now right so kind of um branching off of what you just said like w what do you have to say to the coaches who kind of or they might say you're wrong or they might say no like this way is the right way when you know they're talking to a guy here you know who played eight seasons in the major league you know 290 career hitter and these guys may have not made it past uh, the varsity level in high school you know like depending on who it is but so like coming from your shoes a guy who's you know played baseball at the highest level like what goes on in your head when you hear those kinds of things it makes me mad honestly because i mean you know less than twenty thousand people have ever played in the major leagues in right. over 150 years. So you can't tell me that, in my mind, every single guy that played in the big leagues, for if it was for a day, is a big leaguer, right? Yeah. Yep. Not many of those have ever existed. So to kind of discount what they did and say they were no good or um, they couldn't play today um, – you know, I think it's a bunch of garbage, and I I don't give it really any any credence because you can't tell me that, you know, Ted Williams and Tony Gwynn and these guys couldn't play today. Oh, There's yeah. no doubt in my mind they could. Yeah. So now, once you kind of started, you know, all the videos and stuff, like you kind of mentioned it before with like how like you know your views were kind of climbing, the people following you, but like, did you ever expect to kind of make you know? this whole movement out of it or it was just like your thought you should like throw up a video you know one time joke type of thing yeah it was just a joke i had no intention of doing this at all and now it's like i mean this is the second um i did a podcast earlier today i've probably done 60 podcasts radio shows zooms now they want me to do one where 
I talked to uh, someone mentioned it today on Twitter where we get a, a group of dads, you know, who are just trying to. I saw that one on Twitter. Yeah. Figure out what they want to do, what they should do with their kids. And I don't have all the answers. You know, yeah. I basically have what worked for me and what worked for the guys that I played with and against. Yeah. And, you know, I'm willing to offer, you know, my experiences to anybody that wants to hear about it. You know, it's kind of fun. I mean, it's not like there's anything else going on in the sports world right now. So, yeah. you know, it's kind of, it just kind of like worked out this way that this has happened. Gotcha. So, Last question I ask you is, since you now have a more established platform on Twitter where you could post something and say something and more people are going to see it, are there any other changes in baseball that you would like to see happen? And could you see yourself kind of using your platform on Twitter to kind of help uh, make those changes? Yes, I'd love to. Um, I mean, how old are you, Nico? 19. 19. So... Let's see, you were born in 2001? Yes, sir. Yeah, my last year in the big leagues, 2001. So uh, the game has changed over the course of your lifetime um, to where, you know, it's almost like you can't just be a good, solid baseball player anymore in people's eyes yeah. um, and have a long career. You have to be, a you know, specialized. If you're a bullpen guy, you got to throw 100. If you're – you know, a position guy, you got to hit home runs. And so much of the game, the strategies of the game, you know, mo moving guys over in the right situations and getting guys in and um, just a, a lot of the um, strategy in the game, I think, has been removed because now everything, they look at a, you know, a spreadsheet or, you know, a printout and say, okay, this is what happens this percentage of time. So let's try and do this, or, you know. This guy hits the ball over here all the time, so let's have three guys on the right side of the infield. Um, and guys are, are, are stubborn, and guys won't make adjustments. And, yeah. I mean, I wish they would have put a shift on me. I, I, pray, I mean, it would have been so much easier. I would have bunted every single at-bat yep. if they had the third base and playing shortstop. You know, yeah. and eventually they're going to stop. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, my, in my era, it was the goal was to get to first base get the first base, get them over, get them in, you know, and it seems like that's gone. You see guys going up there with second, third, no outs, swinging for the fences instead right. of just putting the ball in play and, and cutting down their swing with two strikes and driving a run. So I wish the game would get back to that. To me, it was more enjoyable to watch. And, um, you know, as far as the kids, I think that we need, just need to teach kids basic fundamentals, you know, and um, let them have fun. Quit trying to make your kids into big leaguers. Yeah. Because there's not very many. There's over 7 billion people in the world, and there's 700 major leaguers, 750 in a given year. You know, so why is everybody trying to, you know, get their kids three lessons a week to become big leaguers? The odds are just not good. Right. Well, Jeff, thank you very much for coming on. I appreciate it. I appreciate your time. And real quick, before I let you go, are you wearing one of your uh, one of your T-shirts? I, I am. It's all sweaty. It's here in Texas. There you go. 97 today, and uh, I, I was hanging up down for a couple of minutes. My son had to rescue me. So <laughs> I appreciate you having me on, Nico. I wish you the best, man. Absolutely. Thank you. Anybody that sees that, visit his website, She Gone. I might even buy one. Grab one of his T-shirts. Join the movement. Awesome. I appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks, Jeff. Signing yeah, off. Buddy. All right.